study day. Drake and Chris and Kim and I and everybody at CGNF started to talk about let's go do this project because it's going to be one of the first large scale projects using natural farming in the state. So like when we're talking large scale, we're talking quarter acre slots. So basically this grant was funded for CGN, CGNN, which means all of you. So basically we're looking at all of us putting on this project by putting on workshops out in Kohala to teach you guys how to treat fireweed and do large scale farming using natural farming. Okay? As you can see, the fireweed, pretty picture, yuck. All the yellow flowers out there, it looks like mustard. But this is one of the most invasive species we have on the islands in pastures. It's gotten to the point where almost 250,000 acres of pasture land on this island is infested with fireweed. So when we came to the county and asked if we could do this trial, it was a no-brainer. They said, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? As long as you use scientific methods, you guys can go out there and teach the cowboys what not to do. Okay? So what is the fireweed? The fireweed is a daisy-like herb that grows upright at its branch. And it could grow as high as 20 inches. Okay. Yellow flowers and 13 petals. Make sure you count the petals because otherwise you're going to think Rodelia or even an Hawaiian daisy is, is the fireweed. It's not. When they get matured, the flowers turn white and turn into seeds. And I've never found another plant that the seed is more viable I think if for every seed you plant, you get 100% germination. It's from native, it's a native of Madagascar. It was brought here by mistake. It was brought in by hydro mulching seeds from Australia that they were putting on the roadsides. The seeds was in the hydro mulch from Australia. That's how it got established on island. As you can see, this is what it looks like. This is a probably about 700 acre pasture. The whole pasture is infested. Count the leaves, count the petals, there's 13. So make sure you look at the, the flower, that's what it looks like. And you're going to see it right along the fence line, usually when there's a lot of livestock. Each floor can produce 150 seeds. Each plant can produce 30,000 seeds. So you saw how many plants there was in that 700 acre plot? So how many seeds do you think they can produce? The billions, yeah? So it's usually, usually it gets transmitted through cattle. <coughs> so you guys walking through the pasture, the, the seeds get on your clothes and you end up walking in an uninfested area and it gets established. The reason why the livestock industry is so worried about this plant, it's toxic, it's toxic to livestock. The livestock eat it, they will either go off feed, the liver will get all jaundice, they will die on you, they won't reproduce. So it is a major, major sticker for any livestock. Usually sheep have a better chance of surviving than any of the other animals. And as you can see, it's one of the top 10 weeds in Australia. So we got a big one when we, when we got infested here in Hawaii. Okay, the current practices we have, best management practices, is we got herbicides, we got biological controls, we got managed multi-species multi grazing, you can burn them, you can cut them and you can pull them. That's all what is available. But let's look at each one of them 
and you decide why we should do natural farming. <coughs> Herbicides. <coughs> this is what is approved in pastures. Why is this not a good idea? Right. Put in them out there, and the animals can eat the grass. Mm, that's the good, yeah? And you look at the, the one down here that goes round up. You spray that on a yellow flower, or ask them why. Or you ask them why too. So, you know, you, you got to really think. When you got out there, we got something that we can spray in the industry. I go back to the beef industry and say, you know, you got to bet on that. But you just give us the chance to let us do a few trials that we can show you. That we can get away from the pesticides. Because you guys don't want to use this. You can tell because you guys are not buying it. Because it's so expensive to treat the pesticides. So, herbicides is not what I recommend even though I used to spray the first one, because that's the cheapest one in the industry. But the problem with this one, you gotta spray them three times. You knock it down, spray it again, by the third time you kill it, but by the time you kill it the third time, the, the, the seeds started to sprout again. So it's a never ending story about fire. We use multi-species grazing, but most of my beef ranchers get a hard time, hard enough time raising beef that they're not going to put another species in there. Because my guys are mainly grass farmers, they're not cattle farmers. They look at the grass and they determine how many animals and how many days they can put the animals on the grass before they have to move. So when you put multi-species in there, it's tiny, the stocking density, the duration of grazing, all of that get all jumbled up. Even though there's an advantage to it, most guys do not do it in the state of the world. You can burn them. You try to set on fire now in Kohala. With a drop going on right now, you're not going to be able to do it. Because you're going to have to hire a fire department, you're going to have to hire all these other people to come out there and watch the burns. Because once that fire takes off, you who started the fire is the blame. So we're not going to do a prescribed burn to control the 250,000 acres. Mowing, pulling is too labor intensive. By the time you figure it out, you finish one pasture, you go to the next one, and by the time you finish the second pasture, you back in a person. So it's a never-ending story. Oh, this is the this is the next story. What does Master Joe call the moth on the bottom? That's the mother of all insects, huh? He tells you the butterfly and the moth is the mother of all insects. Because they produce chewing insects that will go out there and eat the vegetables or whatever. So they went out and they found this study. Yeah? They did a bunch of studies, biocontrol, get the market, bring them under, and they'll eat the fireweed. The human worked for about six months. After six months, the, the moth found something else better. And it started to eat something else. And all of a sudden, we were getting calls from Kona. What's all these little bugs in my house? <laughs> I mean, they were getting thousands of people's houses, crawling through doors, crawling through windows. In fact, I even got uh, reports from the police department you know, that there were accidents because so many of the caterpillars was going across the highway. The cars stopped, they slide, and they banged each other. <laughs> so it, it wasn't a very good idea. They spent millions of dollars there at this time. And the fire weed is still rampant. <laughs> So this is where we met Brother Drake. Brother Drake and Elaine Ingram came in and they started to talking about the biodiversity of the soil using fungus and bacteria. So Elaine Ingram's theory was if you adjust the fungus and the bacteria, 
you can determine what grows. So you can see weeds is heavy bacteria, zero fungus. And as you get closer to the trees, it's heavy fungus, less bacteria. And if you are a plant grower or vegetable grower, you want to be right in the middle. Right? So what Chris Strunk has done with the microscope, he started to study the different fungi and the bacteria. And he found a method that he can increase or change the propagation of the fungi in the hydrogen in a different stage. And basically, this is where we talked to the county, and Drake talked to the county. He sold himself. Because I was on the mainland when he called and said, Hey, Drake, it's not here. I'm not there. You got to do yourself. So I said, you just go up there and you just tell Jane, yes, we can do it. We study the microscope. We'll get into liquid IMO form. And we'll teach the industry how to control the fire by using the frequent spray. So basically, this is what the theory is all about. You're going to go out there, spray, just like spraying chemicals, but it's non-chemical. You can spray the pastures. You can put the cows in the same day. You can feed the cows the sprays. They're not going to get poisoned. You know? So we're at the point where the rancher is looking at us and he said, yeah, you show me. And I said, we showed you already because we already did the trial three years ago. And we did them at a small place where Chris Trump did it. And we just went visit the thing just two weeks ago. We went back up to look at the facility. Still yet, zero fire weed. And you can walk right next door to the next ranch. The ranch is just loaded with fire. So all Chris did was change the fungi, the bacterial ratio, and the liquid spray. Took him eight months. But that's about how long it takes when you use chemicals for us to control it. And we use no chemicals. We just use what we collected indigenously from the area. We learn how to propagate it and ferment it to the point where it's just as good as using one dry I am. So here's the trial, OK? We're going to do the trial. We would like everybody to come out and help us. Because five of us cannot do it myself. We're going to make a large scale iron and what Chris is place. We're going to teach you how to bubble or use a uh, bubbler or what they call aerating tea. Big skill. We'll teach you how to spray according to, to the, what is needed for Rico. Okay, those of you taking class right now, how many pounds of IMO do you put on a quarter acre of land? Oh, Dr. Park, he failed. <laughs> These guys don't know. How many pounds of IMO goes on a quarter acre of land? Quick. How much? Three, um, three. Uh, it's thirteen hundred pounds per acre. So three hundred pounds. Three hundred pounds. Three hundred pounds. Three hundred and twelve pounds. So if you add that up to two hundred fifty thousand acres, there's no ways we can do that with the dry and water. Right? But we gotta show the university because they're asking us, show us how you do it. So we're going to do quarter acre plots, one plot, this is the, this is the track. One plot will be a control. What is your control? You don't put nothing. Just put the piece of tape out. This is plot one, you never do nothing to it. Plot two, you go into square, you spray water. Okay? Plot three, you take an IMO three. I move forward. Put it in the water. Spray that. And plot four. We do a solid iron compost. 
Now we get into scientific data now. I know what, because I saw what Chris did. And Chris used to tell me, Mike, you cannot let this out until we get this grant. Because otherwise, otherwise, somebody else will put it out before us. Now this is cutting edge, huh? because everybody is using chemicals across the nation. And if we can show them that we can control one species of them, we can control all species of them. Wow. We just got to be able to get the right combination. So please sign up. We will buy lunch for everybody. <laughs> you have a great time at Christmas place. We'll show you guys how I was made 300, 400 pounds at a time. So, you know, and then we'll get to meet David Furness. We get to be busy this big ways, beef, this beef ranch. And we go to get to see some of the ranches out there. So it'll be a really good one day workshop. When is that? When's the day? When? Well, we're going to start first. We're going to start planning with Chris. Chris comes back in October. So probably right after October, we'll plan to have a meeting with the group and try to have the workshop. Because what we're going to do is we're going to have you spray. We all can spray one day. And we're not going back for eight months. At the end of eight months, you can see the difference. Can I put the spray once? Only spray once. Wow. That's on Chris Stone, one time. Wow. Oh my God. Okay? Is, the, is yeah. the theory or belief that whichever method that he's figured out that works on this weed, will it work on all weeds? That's what, we, that's what we're trying to prove. We know it works on fire weeds. But that's your So this is a way to put Monsanto out of business. Yeah, amen. Well, it's not Monsanto, it's bear. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, now it's bear. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I've been waiting for this for a long time because I'm going yeah. to spray the chemicals. Amen. Yeah. Thanks to Brother Drake because he did them all by himself. I mean, he was all here. <laughs> Nobody else is around. I mean, he's all here before me. I don't want to do this. I was like the. And you know, he came up with the, the full on proposal and he got him funded. We should all probably try and keep this quiet because if Bear finds out, they're probably trying to say I don't I'm not worried about it because I know the thing works. Look at how much money they have in control of the world. Well, I'm just being you know, realistic. I mean, once it's proven, I mean, once this is done and it's proven, then it doesn't matter. I think it's scientifically proven, but we wouldn't want this to be sabotaged. I mean, it's just the truth. It's better that this is out for the safety of the people who are involved. Where do we sign up? Where do we sign up? We just want to spread the knowledge of making IMO. Yeah. I just need to know what they want to Where do we sign up? Probably with Drake. We're going to be super <laughs> Drake is pretty good because he can, he can put them on a computer and guys sign up and we, we can get a list of who's coming. Just like we do in the comes. But uh, yeah, we got quite a few people in Kohala as well. I want to see this. If you can knock this out. Okay, here's the catch. My beef guys, not going to spray the pastures. Okay? Even though we proof it out, the beef industry will not spray the pastures. Why? They have no time. They're moving cows, they're doing all of this. So what's the opportunity for everybody in this room? Drones with sprayers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got to think entrepreneurially. Somebody go get a mean job. Spraying all the pastures.
could be on full time job. Crop dusting. There it is. Yeah. Crop dusting. And if it works here, it's probably good to take them down to Australia and work them down there too. Uh -huh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thanks to CGNF, I don't think I'm going to do That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Mike. Is there a plan for the for the going for the future that if they can prove this that you can patent this? Can yes. this be patented? Well, Chris has pretty much gone to the rigor mongolia. I understand that he's the only certified organic farm, natural farm in the state. How did he do? Put in the owners with natural farming so we can get other people certified. We can't go. Because the priest started the walkthrough, he just got to follow these steps, yeah, what do you do? Yeah, but if the, if the process and or Formula is patented, then somebody else can come along and patent it and then bury it. I don't think anybody does that. Because otherwise, somebody would have done a long time ago. That's the truth. There's a reason why that's the truth. Give you all the dilutions. You guys understand that? Yeah. Why? Why do you give you all the dilutions? Okay. Yeah. Why, why, why do you use why do you use uh, fermented plant juice one to five hundred? Sure. Oh. Yeah, you, you tell you one to five hundred, one to thousand. Why do you tell you that? Mm. It's because you got to train your eye. The solution you gave you is a formula. But you're not going to get the 25 pound color bar unless you learn your plant cycle and how to adjust the sprays. Mm -hmm. I have to learn that the hard way. Oh, wow, this guy gave me all this part. Don't take, don't take his business. There it is. Because I used to go to farm with, oh, this one got to go one to eight hundred. What? What is that? Type two and a half spray? So, oh, you just got to look the plant. Let me see the difference. Your eye is different. You gotta, you gotta work on a daily basis and train your eye to look at that plant. That's why natural farming is an art. When you get one guy like Drake, you get one guy like Chris or Kim, you pick the brain. Because them guys, their eyes, they are they actually talking to the plant. See, I'm a livestock person. I'm not supposed to be talking about plants. But I need the plants to feed the cows. So I talk about plants. But you as future natural farmers, you need to practice. You need to attend classes. Get yourself certified. Because the more people who get classes, the more people who get certified. Faster we will move and turning this thing over from using the chemicals to natural mm -hmm. The swine industry has already made the move. I get calls from all over. Right? Hey, what are you guys doing? You know, come in the smell, come all of this. Oh, the thing can go on one step. Oh, yeah, I'm going to pitch it. Oh, I get 2,000 days. Ah, right, we can do it. I don't know if they can do more, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, we're at the point right now where I'm across the country. Pigs, poultry, Kenji went back with Drake and Chris. He converted his whole farm. When he converted his whole farm, the other tree producers jumped on and had three out of the four, 100% percent Korean natural farm. So your eggs that you buy in the store from local producers now is natural farm eggs. Now you're working on the fourth one. So you can get 100% natural farm. 
And no be intimidated by anybody. You guys are all the same. I give you a story about one guy that I hired to drop me do the poultry poultry uh, seminars in Honolulu. He kills probably about twenty thousand birds a year. He runs broilers. So I figured he was the one that was most experienced. I mean talk to these guys in the commercial business. He sits down, he sits down next to the first guy. He said, oh, hi, I'm so-and-so, I, I run some boilers, and I do about 20,000 birds a year. The guy looked at him and said, oh, hey, that's fine. Who are you? Well, I run the largest poultry farm here out in my and I run 240,000 birds. <laughs> well, the guy looked at me and said, hey, I don't think I can do this seminar. What do you mean? I said, these guys in about 200,000, I'm only talking to I thought, that's more than what I say is in the So I said, don't get intimidated, because it's the same thing. They can use the lab, they can use the IMO in their cages. You just got to get them established and let the thing roll. It's starting to roll. That guy is starting to ask more and more questions. Our challenge is food safety. But Chris Chop has been able to beat the food safety track. Huh? So when you guys come to Kohala, I will make sure that Chris tells you what the secret is. It's not that. I said, how come you don't tell everybody? Well, at first, I never knew what to do. I said, you know, Chris, we're at the point right now where Hawaii is endangering, it is endangered of losing all of its agriculture. And you're sitting on something, you can get all commercial rice approved to use natural farming. Now is the time for you to promote it. Have you ever thought what's going to happen with medical marijuana? Yeah. Big thing, huh? What they spray on medical marijuana? Probably not natural farming. Wouldn't that be great if we spray green natural farming on medical marijuana? When you start thinking that kind of stuff, thinking way out of the box, everything can happen. You just got to have the faith. No scare. You guys, you gotta try, gotta train your eyes. So all you gotta do is spray the plants once a week. You get the plant, take a picture, so if you can't recognize the plant, you take a picture every week. You just look at the picture. This leaf change from this leaf. Or what do I need to make that be bigger? Just adjust your sprays. Because Mr. Cho made it easy for you. Yeah? Type 2, type 3 spray. Chubby, skinny, chubby, skinny. So you tell that. <laughs> but basically, you're not telling me hey, you gotta change the sprays a little bit. Just by looking at the plants. I learned the hard way. I used to go out there, I used to take, oh, I pick this guy's brain. And I don't know who he's he owned me. <laughs> and I, every time he asks me to do something, I'm jumping. What should I do? Because he saved the swine industry. And he would save the swine industry from the United States. That's the reality. He had to call us all the time. Okay? So hopefully we'll get this thing going in October. You have a one day workshop, so it doesn't take too long. We'll show you how to make the IMO, we'll show you how to bubble it up, and we'll spread the pastures on the IMO. Because our, our workshops, you don't need to go more than four hours. The last workshop I had for building a pig pen, we was finished, we had 30 people, we finished building three styes 
you get an hour and a half. I mean, everybody just put the label together, slammed it in, and if we would have, that would have taken at least 50 or 60 minutes. I can do the same thing with the springs. Okay? So hopefully we'll see you guys in October. Thank you. Thank you, Mike.